So back to talking about songs. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are fighting over who likes him the most. I can see. Yeah, he's a good guy, right? He really is. Whoa, 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 All right, whoa, whoa, whoa. define the term yeah, neutral right. plane. <laughs> These are our objectives. Explain the cause for armature reaction. Describe the effects of armature reaction on the neutral plane. Explain what interpole is and describe its functions. And explain how interpoles compensate for armature reaction. That shouldn't scare you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, neutral plane. It's it's once you know what these things are, it's not a problem. All right, neutral plane is a position in which no voltage is induced in the conductor. So all we're doing is we just now define something we already knew. When the armature was up here and we had a single wire here and single wire here, it was in the neutral plane. It was just running parallel to the lines of flux, um, which is fine. So the neutral plane is up there and the neutral plane's up there. We can allow for it. Well, what did I put here? Any shift in the position of the magnetic field of a generator causes a shift in the position neutral plane. Um, all right, so what that's saying is this is all fine and well to have an armature here and the other loop right here and say, okay, there's the neutral plane. But that assumes that you have no shift in the lines of flux and that they're just going to go nice from north to south and nice little neat little lines. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to shove in here not one loop of wire, but an armature containing all kinds of loops of wire that is going to have what running through it? Current. Current running through a loop of wire. Current running through a loop of wire is going to create magnetic a magnetic field. That magnetic field is now going to interact with this magnetic field and cause distortion, which is going to look like that. I think this statement is what I just had in the last slide. Any shift in the position of the magnetic field of a generator causes a shift in the position of the neutral plane. So shifts in the magnetic field are caused by a change in the load of the generator. So not only uh, are we subject to, um, and again, this is just a two-pole right here. Or two -pole. Um, not two-pole, but a single-loop armature. Not only do we only have a single-loop armature, uh, we talked about that current running through it is going to create its own magnetic field, which will distort this. And so we can, say, well, we can plan for that, except um, caused by a change in the load of the generator. So as the generator load increases, what happens to the current running through the armature? Stay the same, increase or decrease? Stays the same. The armature. Decrease. What produces the electricity? Is it the loop of wire turning, the armature, or the things that stay stationary? Magnetic. Field poles. Okay, so the armature, the spinny part, is the thing that is creating the electricity going to a commutator and then going out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so as I increase the demand on the generator, I turn on landing lights, radio, coffee pot, curling irons, uh, toilet <laughs> seat, lighter. yes, toilet seat warmers, the whole thing, the generator has to work harder and put out more current. That current is going to flow through the loops of wire. That's going to create more. More of a magnetic field, causing more distortion. So that's what that's what that statement means, are caused by change in the load. So if I had no load, then these would have no current flow, and the neutral plane would go back to where it was. So the neutral plane is going to shift with the load. Um, see, this is because this current flow in the armature increases, so does the magnet. Hey, I was right about that. Um, glad I was right. So that's what I just said. What else am I going to say? Neutral plane shift. So, oops, don't do that. All right, so uh, this is just representation of where we started. We said, oh, the loops of wire rotating through here are cutting through the lines of flux. And so right at this point, right at this point was the maximum current generation. Well, that's not really important um, so much as where the max is. I mean, it is important, but we also have to get to know we have to know where the zero reference is. So keep that in mind too. We have to know that's going to be very important. So with armature reaction, we can see that the, the neutral plane has now shifted. All right. This is why it matters. As the brushes cross all these little segments, so remember in our commutator, we had little segments going all the way around. I don't know if I did an odd or even number. Well, I tried. So at some point, the brush is going to be in a spot like that except symmetrical. And as you can see, it's going to short these two out. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good thing. That's kind of a bad thing. So the brushes cross the segments of the comet to actually short, the short them. The only time this is safe is when the segment is in the neutral plane, which means we have to pick it up 
over here and over here, not here and here. This is not an easy thing to explain or even picture in your head. So these are some pictures that I have found that when you kind of process it, it starts to make some sense. So your first thought is, well, wait a minute, we'll go back here and say, if I'm only picking it, if the neutral plane is going to be right here, isn't then somewhere 90 degrees from that where I really want to get the power? Yeah. Okay, and that would be my first thought. And this kind of explains it. So these are two different drawings, basically the same thing. So this is a loop of wire showing the segments. And then what they've done with this loop of wires, they've just taken over here and said, let's just make it a battery. All right, mm -hmm. so it's more of a battery analogy. And so now you can take a look at the way this is running and you can see the right here is one brush and one brush and it's being shorted out across the battery that currently has zero volts, which is the same thing as saying it's the loop of wire that has zero volts. Now this loop of wire down over here has four and this one is six and this one is four, four, six, four. They are wired in, series. well if they're wired in series, what do we do with voltage in series? All right, what is six and four and four? 14. <laughs> Frequency. Frequency. 14 volts. So if I've got 14 volts, does that sound about right for a 12 volt generator? Yeah. Okay, so now when I say a 12 volt generator, again, I'm talking nominal voltage, just like saying a 12 volt battery. Is it really 12 volts? No, nah, it's 13.6, 13.8. So um, you always have to have more voltage coming out of the generator than the battery. Otherwise, it doesn't charge the battery. If they're exactly equal, your battery is not going to get charged. If the battery is more than the generator, the generator is not a generator. It's an electric trolling motor. All right? And so it, you know, it adds a half a horsepower to your engine. Uh, you don't want that because it's going to drive the generator. The generator has to put out more. So if we look at this, we can see that all of these segments are in series. And it ends right here. And this is the positive end of that battery. And it ends right here, which is the negative side. So in just a fraction of the turn, the brush is going to be right here. And the brush is going to be over on um, the other side, which is going to be the negative side of that loop. And so that is going to pick it up and it work out right. Yeah, it's going to be on this one and that one, which is going to then give us the 14 volts we're looking for. Where's the 28? So does that sort of help you out on that one to see what it means? So this split second right there, it's at zero voltage. And then in a second, it's not. Actually, it's going to be 28 if I look at it because we're going to go positive to negative and then connect that over here to this side. So if this brush is going to be on this one right here, right? <coughs> and the brush right there. So if we stacked all those batteries up and I had this is my positive, this is my negative, what do we have? Twenty-eight volts. So it looks like that's a twenty-eight volt generator. If I'm looking at it right. Anybody disagree with that? It's so simple. Well, if I had a positive here and I put my negative right here, it would be how many volts? But it's not that way. I got the positive here and the negative here. So it's got to go all the way through that. So I believe that would be 28 volts on this one. So, but in just a second, this one's going to be over here, and this one's going to come to four, and this one's going to come up here, and this one's going to be at zero. So, is that a full revolution? It just just a tiny bit, tiny bit of a turn, tiny bit of a turn. I have no idea how to erase all these marks. Now. Yes, Tim. So the tiny bit of a turn. Um, say that again. The tiny bit of turn will make 14 volts into 28 volts. So we understand. It's old times. Yeah, I got it. Well, I don't know how to get to the eraser anymore. Is it the draw tab? Hey, there we go. All right. With it cleaned up, can you see the segments right there in the line? Yeah. Okay. In just a second, this brush is going to be right here on this one. And in just a second, that brush is going to be right here on this one. 
So it's safe right now because this particular battery here has no volts, so to speak. So am I shorting anything on important? No. Ah, it doesn't matter. Same here? Ah, it doesn't matter. But in a second, it's not going to be there. It's going to be right here on this one. And it's going to be right here on this one. And so if we look at that and follow it through, on the positive side we got 14, on the negative side we got 14. And then it's going to roll a little bit more, and then pretty soon it's going to get to this segment. But this segment's going to be way up here. So remember, these brushes stay put, and this circle goes around. So the voltages go around, or this? The voltages go around. So whatever loop gets to here, it's always going to have zero, zero volts. And whatever loop is right here, it's always going to have four. Whatever loop is here. So in a second, this loop's going to have, come up here, have four. This one's going to have six. That one's going to have four. What changed? Sorry. Um, what changes the voltage throughout the, the diff is it just the amount of coils? Okay, so the coil, because the coil is right here, so to speak, and which is the, which is the magnet. So we can go back to a magnet analogy. So the magnet is right here. But why does it change from six to four? Oh, because the lines of flux are coming through here, and which one is going through the lines of flux? Cutting the lines of flux parallel. So the neck, the the four volt that's just above the six volt. Once it gets into the full register position, yep, it's going to change into a six volt. Yep, that's exactly right. Because my lines of flux are going across this. That makes sense. And this one right here is cutting it straight. This one's going somewhat parallel and down. This one's totally parallel. Oh, I see. Really? The zeros are in neutral position. <laughs> yes. And they're starting to gain. Both yes, exactly. Wow. And this one's coming up here, and it's going to be zero. zero pretty soon. You should have said that sooner. Why well, didn't occur to me? <laughs> <laughs> no idea what's next. All right. It makes it hard for me to try to visualize it and think about how fast it's spinning. That happens fast. Yeah. Can I send this to you? Yeah. Of course. Well, I can put it in Canvas. How about that? Even better, Kevin. i tell you what, how about if I record it, put it on YouTube. <laughs> Would that work? Wait a minute. You can do that. <laughs> no, Prince will show me how afterwards, though. <laughs> okay. So, now, this is all, okay, it's, this, this solves, or shows us two things. One, it, it explains why the brushes have to connect over at the, the neutral spot. Here it is. Because it's not causing any kind of damage anything when it's, zero. when it's in neutral position. Right, so that's where you want it. Otherwise, if, there's got to be an easy way to do this, but I'll figure it out. Otherwise, um, if, if I've got this brush over here, then it's going to arc across these two because there's a voltage difference between, or even over here where there's a voltage between zero and four. So it's going to arc more. So right here, it's the safe spot. Now again, that assumed that we set this up with north over, you know, on one side and south on the other. And again, right in the middle of it is where we had the most. Well, that assumes that my neutral plane is neutral, right? But it's going to shift. It's going to shift like that. So what we just drew assumes this, the before, but we got to think about what's going to happen after. Or we've got to do something about it. So. You can do two things about it. One, you can anticipate the neutral plane shift and just shift all of the brushes so that it works. Or you can put interpoles in. Now, interpol, they do two things. One, apparently they investigate uh, video piracy. <laughs> or two, uh, they, they correct for this neutral shift. So, and I think this is a test question somewhere. Interpoles are connected in series with the armature. All right, oh, I tell why. Therefore, the amount of current that flowing through the interpoles is always the same as the current flowing through the armature. So, all right, let's run that through again. So, interpoles are these little tiny poles in between the main poles, and they also call compensation windings. I was gonna tell you which, there's a formula here, but I'll write that down a little bit. So. The interpole is going to correct for the amount of current flowing through the armature, but somehow we have to tell these interpoles how much current is flowing through the armature. All right? They've got to be smart. 
because what happens is the more current that flows to the armatures, the stronger the interpoles have to be to compensate. Alex, you having fun with that over there? What? What? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> All right, so where was I here? So we have to, the, the interpoles have to somehow figure out how much current's flowing through the armature. So how do we do that? Motion. 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 We're going to put them in series with the armature. That way, any current that flows to the armature also has to flow through the interpoles. How hard was that? I they could have a. It, right, but maybe maybe they do in some case. I don't know. So I don't know enough to say that all motors are purely electro, and some are not. All right, interpole has the same polarity. That's what I was looking for as the next main pole in the direction of rotation. Next, so if I go back here, the interpole has the same current. not current polarity. polarity as the next one in direction of rotation. Right, so next. if this is north. Which way is this going? Is it going to the right or to the left? Right. Going to the right. Oops, I need a pen here. It's going to the right because this is an interpole and has the same polarity as the next, next one. one. South, next one. North, next one. South, next one. So an interpole has the same polarity as the next main pole in direction of rotation. So this one here is going to be going this way. South, south. North, north. Uh, does this drawing work before the load increase? And then, oh, okay. Yeah, you can't see the lines too well. I was trying to figure out. They just represent that before the load increase, there's only one, one line of flux coming out of the north. And then after a big load increase, there's a bunch of lines coming out of the north, a bunch of lines coming out of the south, and that keeps the uh, neutral plane in the same, same location. Ah, I guess that's all we need to talk about there. All right. You want me to write some notes about all this stuff, don't you? I, I do, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's on YouTube. Yes, watch it over. All right. So let's see. Well, first we went over the generator. PowerPoint. Um, let's see. What can we say about all of that? All right, generator converts. Generator converts mechanical energy to electrical. Energy. And uh, let's see, the armature. The armature spins. Well, the field, field poles or the, uh, the field stays. Stationary, How about that. I think I'm going to get on that a little bit. Um, let's see. The armature produces. What does it produce? AC or DC? AC. But the commutator. Mechanically, mechanically converts to DC. It's kind of a chop, it's kind of a, not a real smooth DC, but not bad. Let 
me see. In the PowerPoint examples, we used a permanent magnet, right? Do you agree with that? Not too many people. I get my crickets. Out. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. What? A permanent magnet, but. PowerPoint used a permanent magnet. Um, an actual generator uses electromagnets. What's an electromagnet? What's that? Say it loud. Has a current running. Has a current running through it. It's made of, made of electricity. It has an electromagnet wrapped around an iron core. Wrapped around and it sounds familiar. <laughs> it does. What does it sound like? Coil. It's coil, kind of. All right. These are called field coils or field poles. These are called field coils or field poles. Now these field coils and field cores, field, called field coils, field poles, sorry. This is really where we're also, not only does, does that create the electromagnet, which the armature cuts through, but by controlling the field, we can also control the output of the generator. So if the generator needs a lot of output, we just increase the strength of the magnets. If the generator doesn't need much output, then we're going to decrease the strength of the magnets. Hey, I actually wrote that here. What do you know? Oops, I already wrote that. Uh, let's see. Field. By controlling, by controlling the current through the field poles, we control generator output. By controlling the current through the field poles, We control generator output. Now I told you, inside of the generator, it's got the iron core, right? So inside that iron core, uh, the iron core retains magnetism which is actually kind of a good thing. So because it contains what we call residual magnetism, the generator is then what you can call self-exciting, which means it doesn't need any input from a battery to get going. It gets going all by itself. So it uses that little bit of magnetism that is actually in the, in the coils, I'm sorry, in the, the pole shoes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, Armature runs across the magnetism that's left in it. It's not a lot, but it's enough to get going, create a couple of volts. That couple of volts will then go through the field coils. That couple of volts will then be, make the electromagnet a little bit stronger, which then cuts across the armature, which makes some more volts, more volts, more volts, until the whole thing is up and running, and then it can ship it out to the battery. So it's going to get going all by itself until it gets up to battery voltage, then ship it out to the battery. Unlike an alternator, which makes battery voltage to come in to excite it on its own, to excite the uh, field in the armature, armature and the alternator, and then it gets that going. So if, uh, if you had a completely and totally dead battery, would you rather have a generator or an alternator? Generator. There you go. I dropped that. Uh -huh. <laughs>
Good. All right. Uh, got a question? Got a question? Who? Well, I know it's not Alex since he's just sitting there playing oh. on his phone the whole time. Oh. Yeah, I can see that. All right, so go ahead. Is it armature that induces the magnetic field? What's that? On the, is the armature that basically induces the electromagnetism on the on pole shoes or not? Does the armature use the electromagnetic system on the pole shoes? No, what, what creates the, the electromagnetic field? Oh, from the armature. So, yeah, the, the, the permanent magnets create just enough voltage in the armature. The armature then has an output that goes instantly to the field coils, boosting up and then turning, so turning on the electromagnet, so to speak. And then it boosts the voltage up to whatever it's got to be, 12 or 28 volts. And then we're going to talk about the voltage regulator, which is then going to sense that, close the relay, and send it off to the aircraft at that point. So up until that point, it's not going to close the little relay. <clears throat> All right, by controlling the current through the field poles, we control generator output. Hey, look, we got that one. The iron core, the iron core retains magnetism. That allows the generator to become self-excited. That allows the generator to become self-excited. <laughs> when, when, I, when I write the word self-excited, why do, why do I just think of Dennis? I mean, and, then, and then just on cue, I, he gets self-excited over there. <laughs> what was it you said? <laughs> And it's a crying shame that I don't have another camera face. I really think that over in this section, we need to see you guys. And then, well, it'd be better if it was playing on my screen. Then I could circle people. Be like ESPN. I would like that. This means no external. No external current is required. Is required to get the generator working. To get the generator working. Uh, point B, which is pretty much along the same line, residual. Residual magnetism is enough to create a small current that is used to power the generators. Power the generator. Why am I saying generators? Power the generator. Oh, that's why generators, generators possessive, generators field coils to create more current. More current. And really, that that is Power generator works. There's not much more to it than that. Once you understand the commutators, you understand the armature is the thing that creates the electricity for the output. That is the spinny part. You create AC magnetism in the armature based upon permanent magnets. It's going to go out to a commutator, which mechanically converts the AC to a DC. You're going to pick up current off of the commutators, send some of it around electro. Uh, magnet coil, magnetic coils, which is going to create a stronger field, which will create more current inside of the armature, which is going to go out through the commutator mm -hmm. and continue to increase the field strength until you get what you want, and then it will be sending out current to the aircraft. There's not much more to know about it.
is the you would think uh, the core and the generator is that made of it's not soft iron is it like a magneto would be or oh yeah because it's got windings and then it's got laminations of soft iron co uh, core on each one of them and it's got a steel shaft and so yeah so that's got, why it's able to retain oh you're talking about the field uh yeah that sorry the field coils you're talking about not the the armature doesn't have magnetism in it oh, okay. yeah the they field coils field do. Coil cause the magnetism. Yes, the but the armature is made the same way. It's made like a made like a coil of a magneto. So it's got the soft iron laminated cores with wire spun around it. Same thing. Um, the field poles, yes, they have uh, they use metal that has uh, holds residual magnetism with wire wrapped around it. So, so the field coils have a higher retentivity, right? Yes, the field coils have a higher retentivity. And the, the armature? Uh, low retentivity. Because you don't want that, because it's going to yeah. keep changing. Yeah. All right, so that's all fine and well. What happens if you lose your residual magnetism? Will this thing work? No. We got excited. <laughs> we bring Dennis in. Dennis? <laughs> 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 Uh, being it's a generator, we just show it some pictures of some NASCAR stuff, and it gets all, <laughs> woohoo! <laughs> it's excited, and there we go. <laughs> now, we're going to talk about that. Uh, but, you, but if you lose your residual magnetism, or if the residual magnetism gets inverted, the north becomes mm -hmm. south, south becomes the north, the generator is not going to work. And so in order to get it excited, you have to flash it. You, what? you have to flash it. Don't. Don't. Please don't. <laughs> please don't. All right. Uh, okay. Shifting gears just a little bit, rapidly. There are three classifications of generators. I got to roll this up. Oh, man. Uh, generators. <coughs> It's D, like way outside D. One, shunt wound. Shunt wound, what do you suppose that is? Field coils are connected. I heard it connected in what? Parallel with the armature. <clears throat> and parallel to the load. So when we talk about uh, generators, often we're just going to talk about the aircraft load. That's going to include what? Cigar lighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that plus the battery. Okay, the battery should be seen as a load. Yeah. When it's not, it shouldn't be being used. Now it will be off sometimes, huh? Should only be used on Should only be used at startup. But you know, some of these older aircraft, they don't have enough power to actually carry the whole load. So for a while there, it's going to be utilizing the battery to supplement. So we can just do load, load. Let me see. And drawings will be represented this way often. Um, it's not that there's only one field coil, it's just that it's easier to do it this way. So there we go. Generator is in parallel. We'll make this the generator kind of looks like this. Generator is in Here's the generator with the armature, the brushes. So the field coils are connected in parallel with the generator, or the armature, I should say, and in parallel with the load. Yes? I know on like some aircraft that are like older, you have to keep it running until you get to a higher RPM on the generator. Uh-huh. Right. That's called coming in speed. Okay. Get out of here. So <laughs> the, re the reason for that is because it's, it's still creating current generator right but it's not going to they got these two jokers passing notes you got oh, Alex oh. playing on Facebook back there what does it say Tim can I read it sure. yeah Tim so so once you're like this guy, <laughs> right? 
Let me read it. What's it say? Uh, no, it's about you. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> does that make sense? My question is like, why isn't it going back? <laughs> okay, so why isn't it going back? What do you mean? Or like, what? you said it goes to the battery, right? Because the battery has the battery's part of the load in this yeah. system. Okay, so. And, and this is going to be a, a point that I'm going to make later, but since you brought it up, we'll just jump to it now. So in a generator, one of the negative sides, or one of the, the nice sides is it's self-exciting, but one of the downsides is it does take a lot of RPM to make this work. Why? Because what's going on? you got to spin it fast enough so that the armature cutting across these low-quality uh, um, permanent magnets creates enough magnetism to go into electromagnets to create enough magnetism to then bring the whole thing up to speed where it's putting out battery voltage. And that's rather high. And I suppose if you want to ask, well, why didn't they just make the magnet stronger? Well, then you can't back it off if they're permanent magnets. So it's always going to put out a certain amount of voltage. And I don't think you want that. You want it so you can actually bring it, you know, throttle it back. So it would be like having a car that idled at 3000 RPM. It's like, well, that's, yeah. <laughs> what's that? Race gas? <laughs> so, all right. So it takes a lot of RPM to get it going. Now, your question is why doesn't? Well, yeah, because you answered like the, when you're spinning the armature, mm -hmm. you have to spin it so fast for it to actually. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's why. And so until you get up to that point, gen the battery's yeah, taking the load. Yeah, it won't hit your face. So you can sit there idling, and uh, if you've got a big load on your aircraft, you're going to see your ammeter discharging. That means it's going from the battery to the load. And then you're going to bring up your throttle, bring up your throttle. You're going to get to about 1,200, 1,500 RPM. Suddenly the, the ammeter needs to go think, and it goes zero, and then 10. And that means it's online now charging the battery. Why didn't they make them so the you wouldn't have to spin the armature so fast? Like well, I just, I, I wasn't there for this committee, but my thought is if you just made gigantic permanent magnets in here, then how are you going to throttle it back? How are you going to not put out 26 amps? I was going to say, now you're making it bigger and heavier. You, where are you going to find these things? Little Cessna 140s and, well, I guess I shouldn't say. Some big airplanes have them. But, um, yeah, you don't want to make it bigger and heavier. You want it designed to handle the load. Is, is that how your airplane works? No, no. I have a new airplane with an alternator, but the oh. Cessna 140 I flew all the time. That's how it worked. Okay. Yeah, a generator. Didn't have an alternator. And that's, that's fine. How often do you fly around your aircraft at 1,500 RPM? Taxiing or landing, land, not even run up. I mean, like yeah, or landing. So it's never a problem. It was never a problem in the 140 until I was flying at night, landing with all the landing lights on and the nav lights on and everything else. Coming in for landing, you could look over the ammeter in a discharge state. Well, between here and landing, and that little plane was pretty quick, so it wasn't a big problem. Oh, taxiing too. All right, um, let's see. Make that drawing go away. So then, so we have one, now we got the other one. We have series wound. Series wound. Uh, field coils are in series with the armature and in series with the load. So field coils are in series with the armature and in series with the load. When we talk about motors, we're going to run into the same thing. Oops, it's about to use the wrong drawing. And when we talk about motors, I, I get more into the why you do this. But I can just say for now, one of the things you can note is that anything that the armature produces has to go through the field coils, which is, makes it a little more difficult to regulate what the field is doing. So is the output picked up off the armature winding or 
Well, the output's going to be here, through this and then through this. So is that coming out through the armature or the fuel? Output always comes off the armature. And then compound wound is our third. And that means that field coils, field coils are in series parallel. with the armature and load. So if we have the armature, got to have one in parallel. And we've got to have one in series. There we go. So compound wound, the load, we have it in parallel. Field coils are in parallel. Here's one in parallel. Here's one in series, parallel with the loads. Series with the load. Yes, I do get into why they do, why they are what they are. Shunt wound, also known as, you should know that, also known as? Resistor. resistor. Did you say resistor? Could somebody back there just kind of hit him a little bit? Is that what I said? <laughs> <laughs> Shunt also means what? Parallel. Parallel. It must use a regulator. And a regulator is a voltage regulator, amperage regulator, reverse current cutout. We're going to talk about all that. But something like this must use a regulator because, regulator because, because one, because of a lot of things. One, um, nope, I'm going to go three. That's what I'm going to do. Three. The generator, oh yeah, I remember this one. Generator output, output can travel through, through what? You go look at your drawing, you look at the shunt wound, generator output has how many choices? Two, two choices, what are those two choices? Load and through aircraft load. or field windings, right? All right, that seems like a really good place to stop. We will pick this up tomorrow.